Hey, how's everyone out there doing today? Slam Pig Magoo, welcome back to the channel. You guys that keep checking out these videos, you mean the world to me. Thank you so much for coming back time after time. But, um, yeah, man, I think, uh, I think today's the day that Magoo finally went crazy. I think I just developed myself a psychological condition, one of those... One of those twitching nervous disorders that that you know people seem to be having so much these days, man. I think I uh, I think I officially came down with agoraphobia this morning. You know, agoraphobia is that shit where like people don't want to leave their house. They they you know they just want to sit at home and hibernate, hide from the problems of, of the society that they live in. And uh, I'm all about that today, my friends. Oh my god, and uh, I wasn't even outside for more than ten minutes this morning. I was ready to come back in, you know. It um. Uh, it really, it all started yesterday when I made the cardinal mistake of running out of coffee and forgetting to grab some at the store before coming home. You know, so I woke up today, not a, not a single ground of coffee anywhere in my house. I'm like, this is no good. I, I got to get out of here. I got to get some coffee, you know. And uh, I threw the shoes on. I threw the pants on. I hit the front door. And as soon as you hit the city, you know, as soon as you, you hit these streets, it's just the... Uh, the cultural enrichment of uh, urban living hits you. The diversification of uh, America just just splashes you in the face like a, a cup of ice water being thrown at you. It's just it's just shocking sometimes, you know. And uh, it works on you, you know. The aesthetic of the ghetto you can get past. You know what I mean. You can walk by the needles on the ground, the abandoned and, and boarded up businesses and homes. You know you can step over the junkie sleeping on the sidewalk. You know you can even tell yourself that it doesn't phase you. You know, but it's when you start having interactions with the inhabitants of the ghetto, where the the true nature of of just diversity hits you. You know, and, and how just impossible it is for any of us to, to live together cohesively in any real meaningful way you know it um at, it, like I live a few blocks from an ATM and there's there's a little coffee shop next to there you know so so I head out the door and I go and I stand in line uh at the ATM there's like one or two people ahead of me I forget how many and uh, I'm sitting there waiting for my chance to go up there and hit the buttons and all of a sudden I start hearing like these little jingling jangling uh, charms like, like uh, almost like the sound of jingle bells that you'll hear around like Christmas time. You know what I mean, but kind of fainter than that. You know, so I'm hearing this, and and it's it seems to be getting louder, like it's getting closer. So I look over my shoulder, you know, and behind me, to to you know, coming up into the line queue, uh, is this older Indian woman, uh, uh, dot Indian, not feather, uh, uh, like like tech support Indian, a a former resident of the country of India, you know, <clears throat> and um. I look down at her ankle and she has those like traditionalist anklets on that Indian women wear with all the bells and the charms on them and everything. And right off the bat, I want to roll my head, roll my eyes back because I know what those anklets are. You know, they, um, uh, like, a, like the deep traditional Indian women will wear these anklets with bells and charms on it so that when they walk around, it makes that noise so that their husbands can hear where they are, you know, so they're not like sneaking around on their husband. Uh, a lot of young Indian children will also be given the uh, the anklets with the bells on them, you know. And it, it's a cultural thing, you know what I mean? It's uh, it's a practice that's used in their country, you know. But here, through my Western, you know, uh, eyes, it, it just comes off as oppressive, you know what I mean? It, um, it It's no big secret, at least to a few, that the Indian culture is as repressive uh towards women as like muslim cultures like these women are property they're owned by their husbands you know they're uh, their children their daughters are sold off by their husband you know and uh you know you wake up and you see that and you're like well geez there's there's a sign that my country is falling to shit staring at me right in the face you know and uh just just even seeing that man i couldn't wait to get home and just get away from all that like diversification of, of you know my uh community it uh diversity is a scam my friends it it doesn't work it never has worked it will never work in the future it is a disaster as it's being rolled out to us right now it's just it just can't happen it's just an impossibility and uh it, if you you know feel like sitting back and, and hearing another bullshit story i will tell you exactly why diversity will never work uh there's just too many problems and you know one of the problems uh, behind why diversity won't work is your common dog, your four-legged friend, the doge. Uh, the dog steps out of my mind as an example of why diversity will never work. And if you give me a moment right now, I'll tell you exactly how. Oh, 
Now, I already know what you're thinking. Thinking, Magoo, how are you going to sit there and blame a dog for all the problems of diversity? Well, I assure you, I'm not placing the blame on our, our beloved four-legged friends. What I'm doing is I'm just using them as an example. I assure you, no dogs were hurt in the production of this video. But uh, it, what we're going to do, I'm going to use this dog as maybe you could think of it as a little like a thought experiment, if you would. <coughs> you know, we're going to take a look at your average diversified block of uh, United States, any city, any state, you know, it could be anywhere. And uh, hell, it, we'll call it Diversity Town for the meeting of this video, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, you, Mr. John Q. American, average, Caucasian, hard-working white guy, white person, have you, whatever. Uh, you love bacon, you love freedom, you know what I mean? You're an average white guy, but you find yourself living at the bottom of a comfy little cul-de-sac down in Diversity Town, USA, you see? There's three houses, you live in the middle. One day you wake up, it's a nice day out, you walk out onto your porch to enjoy the fresh morning air. As you close the door behind you, you also notice that the neighbors on each side you also walked out to enjoy the fresh morning air of Diversity Town, you know? Eh. All three of you walk out onto your respective porches, look out across the way, and you notice that there's a dog just sitting there in the middle of the road, minding its own business. Now, this isn't a dirty dog. It's not some rabid Cujo sitting there all glitching the fuck out with drool coming down his head, acting all sketchy. You know, it's not some little ankle-biting yipper with the, the pink bows in its hair or what have you. It's just, it's, it's a common dog, you know what I mean? It, it could belong to one of the other residents on the street. Maybe it's from the block over. You don't know. It's just an average dog, you know? Now, you look over your one shoulder at your first neighbor, you know? Now, your first neighbor in Diversity Town, USA, he's a, he's a migrant from, let's say, a Muslim country. He's from the Arab Emirates, maybe Qatar, somewhere around there, you know? And your Muslim neighbor looks over at this dog sitting there in the street, and he's almost disgusted with himself. Now, you see, in that part of the world, the dog is a nuisance animal. You know, they run around in packs, they destroy stuff, they rip trash out. Dogs are viewed uh, to them similar to the way that a big, gnarly-looking sewer rat would be, uh, would be viewed by us. You know what I mean? It just almost incurs an instinctual disgust towards it, you know? And uh, your neighbor hates this dog, doesn't like it right off the bat, would rather shoo it away, kick it, out of the out of its path rather than let it walk in front of him you know what i mean the uh this dog gets no respect from you your one neighbor he just does not like this dog at all you know but uh hey that's the uh that's the price of the of diversity right you, you're living in diversity town so you you know you you got to give up a little bit of something so you shrug it off you know maybe you turn now you look over at your other neighbor sitting there at the bottom of your cul-de-sac now, your other neighbor is a migrant from, let's say, uh, eh, Asia somewhere. You know, maybe he's uh, Cambodian, maybe he's Lao, uh, from Laos, you know. And, um, oof. Yeah, he looks at this dog. Mm, uh, yeah, he looks at this dog a little different than, than you and I might look at this dog. Yeah, this this dog is food to this man, you know, it, uh, especially over in Southeast Asia, they're all, they're all starving over there, it's, they're, they're dirt poor, they're eating the bugs out of the ground to stay alive, you know, and over there, if you are fortunate enough, if you are blessed enough to find a dog running around, you're going to jump on it, you know, and you're going to bring it home, and when your family sees you walk through the door with a whole dog, they know they're dead. They're going to have themselves a feast tonight. You know, they're going to be so thankful. Your wife, your little Laotian wife is going to look at you like you, you're a great provider. You know what I mean? You're, uh, mm, you're eating well. You know what I mean? You're even going to have yourself some friggin' some caca spaniel sandwiches tomorrow. I mean, you, you got yourself some food there, as disgusting as that is, you know? But, uh, Hey, that's, that, that's the price you pay for living in Diversity Town, USA. You know what I mean? And as you stand there on your porch, the bottom of the cul-de-sac, Mr. John Q. American, you look upon this dog, and what you see is something totally different from the gentleman to your left and to your right. Uh, you see a treasured member of your family. You know what I mean? Americans love their dogs. Uh, you know, we spend 
probably billions a year on gourmet dog food, on craft dog toys. There's a booming industry that provides ridiculous looking clothing that you can put on your dogs and dress them up like whatever, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, we, we love them, you know, and we are disgusted with the opinions that are held uh, by our neighbors of this, this dog in front of us, you know. And that, that, my friends, is how the dog makes diversity impossible. Because if we cannot come to a consensus on something as slight as our four-legged, four-legged friend, you know, as little Fido, as Spot, Buck, whatever your dog's name is, how can we possibly come to a consensus on the greater social issues that plague every country, the role of the woman uh, in particular? You know, I mentioned that earlier with the, the traditional Asian um, bells around uh, their anklets and everything like that. It's, it's ridiculous, you know. Uh, you know, it, uh, it's just not working out. You know, we, can, we can't even agree on the dog. We're not going to agree on anything else, you know. Uh, what we have here is a mixture of people, at least here in this country, I'm American, you know, probably most of my, my viewing audience is American. We come from a culture that has fought for freedom. We have uh, established it and we have battled, it. well, in the past we've battled a lot better to maintain it, but we have, we have held on to it, you know. And when you bring people into our society that have not achieved this freedom, have not traveled the road, spilled the blood, um, you know, shed the tears and sweat the beads of sweat to achieve this freedom, they are going to mishandle it. They're going to mishandle it at every opportunity. They're going to piss it away. And when you add so many of them people that they become a sizable chunk, dare I even say a majority in current times, then um, freedom is just taken from you in great handfuls. I mean, the uh, the so-called white majority, uh, you know, the tipping point probably happened maybe around a decade or so ago, maybe a little bit more. Some people will argue. You'll even see more liberal liberal institutions arguing that the point has yet to happen. That we still have you know decades to go. But that 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 is a pure fiction. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it happened around a decade or so ago, and you know, socially around that time is when we all started to lose our rights. We started to slide down the slippery slope of censorship here on social media. Um, a large portion of the population believes that election integrity is now an issue, you know, and um, these are just basic elements of freedom, of democracy, you know, and when we went, we being, you know, America's historical majority, people like you and I, when we went, everything we built is went with us you know what i mean the uh what we have left for us now the few of us that are left struggling to survive is is not really even worth fighting for or keeping these days a lot of us just wanted to burn the fuck down so we can rebuild you know it uh and a lot of this is due to uh the diversification you know what i mean just so many people amidst us that do not understand freedom do not know how to safeguard it um you know they're, they're causing it to to be lost. But, um, I don't know, that's, that's only my opinion. What do I know? I mean, I'm just some idiot, you know, just some dope smoking weirdo in a gimp pig mask on the internet. I could be wrong. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not, who knows. But, um, I don't know. What you can do is let me know your opinion in this little comment section down there. Hit the like, comment, subscribe, hit all those buttons and everything. Um, I don't know, I'm going to wrap this up. As always, thanks for watching the video. And, uh, uh, I'm going to throw a little commercial out here before I get out. Uh, every Sunday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, uh, we, are learning, we are running a live stream on this channel, live from the pig pen. You are all more than welcome to, uh, to swing through, you know, say hi in the chat or, or pop through and contribute to whatever uh, bullshit conversations we're having over there. It's, it's a good time. We, you know, we get a nice little growing community, and uh, we'd all love for you to, uh, to show up and be part of it. All right? So once again, thank you for watching the video. Uh, until next time, my friends, be well to each other, take good care, uh, be safe, and stay out of trouble, okay?